，在一个星系的中间，如果用哈勃太空望远镜呢，可以看到一个东西有挡到光线，那是一个在大质量、超大质量黑洞，它的一个用来吸东西，东西吸进来以后，它不会直接掉进来，它是慢慢慢慢转进去，它会有一个虚一个螺旋状的一个盘状结构。那结果其实非常非常小，这个这个星系可以有几千到几万光年这么大，可是中间那个呢，用太阳系很小，那个是一个黑洞，就在中间。Okay, what happens when lots of galaxies collide? You know, many galaxies collide. Most galaxies in the universe are in clusters. Our galaxy is in a cluster of galaxies. And so this is a simulation of what happens when galaxy clusters collide. We started off with more galaxies, now we have four, one, two, three, four. And they move apart for a while, and then close together, and they eventually all collide together, and this can take billions of years. So, 当然也有可能会分开，那到最后，到了呃几十亿以年以后呢，这些星系因为外围离只有吸引嘛，它就最后就慢慢慢慢掉下来。During during all these collisions, oxygen is formed、uh, as you get more stars being created during the collision. Here's a here's a class action. What will happen to the Earth when our galaxy collides with another galaxy? I think maybe we will crash with the sun, because there is more, more sun together, so there will be a high temperature, and maybe the Earth will just crash like that. Okay, and I think we had another answer over here. Anybody else have any different answers? Okay, so what we there are two theories of what would happen. To the Earth, when we collide, we will collide with another galaxy. In four billion years, we will collide with the Andromeda galaxy. And so, one theory, very popular theory, is nothing will happen to the Earth. Our sky will look very different. But because there's so much distance between the stars and between the planets and the stars, we're not going to collide with anything. The other theory says that our our sun and the solar system. Will be thrown around the centre of our Milky Way and out, outside the Milky Way. It's not a very popular theory, but it's it's still a theory. Our Earth is in the 
跟仙女座星系是会接近，现在在接近。四十亿年以后，我们就会跟他碰到，所以是会发生的。有没有人看过仙女座星系？在北半球用眼睛可以看得到，可是用望远镜可以看到像棉花球。有没有人看过仙女座星系？它是唯一不在我们银河系里面的东西，在北半球。As who has seen the sun and the moon? OK。好，当那一天发生的时候，两种理论，第一种就刚刚讲，一什么地球怎么样都都没事，天空会不一样，你不需要望远镜就能看得到仙女座星系，它在天在天空会很大。第二种就是刚才讲的也对，就是它因为被搅和了一下。外面就会把地球抛到银河系外面去，天空也会不一样，很空旷。Okay, here's a simulation of what our sky would look like. The Milky Way, is, the Andromeda is coming. This is our Milky Way. Oh, it's very close, very bright. New stars. So we have more suns, perhaps. Very, very bright, but the Earth is still, still the same. 这是假想的啦，就是如果来当那一天到来以后，仙女座星系就会很大。这是一个旁观者看到我们的银河系跟仙女座星系相撞的星系。Okay, now we want to look back in time. So we want to know what happened to galaxies that are very far away, the earliest galaxies in the universe. And we can look back in time to distant galaxies, but we need a magnifying glass to do that. And so we use a very, very clever method as a magnifying glass called gravitational lensing. In gravitational lensing, you have a lensing, a large, large object in the universe, a quasar or a cluster of galaxies. And Einstein said that light bends around the large, object and so that acts like a magnifying glass it magnifies the light behind it as well as stretching it so that we can see galaxies in the distant universe that we couldn't see otherwise 好，这边又是一个大学问，呃，想要想要做考古，你要知道宇宙的呃历史，就要看到很远，很远的东西很暗，那所以我们看不清楚，光不够，所以需要一个放大镜这样。呃、嗯，这个放大镜是什么呢？大自然提供了一个放大镜，叫做重力透镜。它不是真正的透镜，可是爱因斯坦的理论告诉我们是对的。就是说，当光线经过了一个比较密、质量很多的地方的时候，光线会弯曲。所以，远方的光线本来是这样子散出去的，我们在这边只看到了一点点光，所以光线没地方去。要是有一个东西在我们跟它之间。光原来光的光线，就因为因为弯曲的关系而聚光，就有这个聚透镜的效应。借由这一个聪明的方法，我们跟大自然借透借透镜，利用重力透镜呢，我们可以看到很远很远的天体的的讯息。So we use galaxy clusters. This is a cluster of galaxies. And they're so cluster of galaxies so massive that the light from these galaxies is bent. You can see they're bent into curves, and that's how we know that these galaxies are very distant. And then we can measure the amount of oxygen in these galaxies with our integral field spectrographs. 如果不用刚才讲的那种那种呃光谱仪的话呢，利用那个。中间的这个叫做呃星系团，一个星系团里面可以有上百个星系，记得每一个星系是几千亿的太阳这样子的东西，所以这个地方啊质量很多，很多物质在这边。那你我们看到它，在它更远的地方发出来的光线就会被它弯曲、扭曲，我们就看到很多变形的东西。这边看到还有个弧度，大家。那就是好像我们看放大镜的时候，东西就都变形了。这就是一个活生生的星系团
作为透镜、中立透镜的一个。Okay, uh, we're going to do an example of gravitational lensing. So this is the Smithsonian Natural History Museum in Washington in the United States. We're going to put a lensing mass, a quasar, in front of it and see what happens to this image. Here we go. Whoa. So, what's happened here? We have the two towers are bent, they're curved. This is another image of the ground and the sky. It's a double image. And so this is the sky, this is from the ground, and we have curves from the towers. We need very good models to correct for this effect from the lensing. 刚才的例子是在美国华盛顿 DC 的一个呃 Smithsonian 的博物馆，来做一个。用计算模拟的方式说，如果我们用一个透镜、重力透镜、一般透镜、光学是类似的原理，摆在这边的话，我们就看到这样的情形。透镜它当然不只是两个呃大楼，还有原来的地面的天空，也都呈现在中间。呃呃，利用这样子，我们就可以去算，理论上告诉我们说，什么一个影像原来什么样子。现在变成什么样子？我们可以知道那个透镜的形状啊，物体是怎么分布的。These are some lens galaxies, and astronomers like to give them funny names. This is the Cheshire Cat. This is a bullseye ring. This is a Einstein cross. We have a cosmic horseshoe. Cosmic eyelash. And a cosmic eye. These are all famous, uh, uh, is strongly focused images. On the right side is the Cat Eye, and on the right side is the Cat Eye. And on the right side is the Cat Eye. And on the right side is the Cat Eye. And on the right side is the Cat Eye. And on the right side is the Cat Eye. And on the right side is the Cat Eye. And on the right side is the Cat Eye. And on the right side is the Cat Eye. And on the right side is the Cat Eye. 对吧？叫爱因斯坦，左左下角是马吉，没有听过这个，叫做呃宇宙的这个解码的，呃，然后右边呢就是像眼睛的样子，其实都是变了形了以后，但是有点对称，但是又不是完美的对称。Okay, so this means that we can look back in time. Because we can see very distant galaxies, and we use the Hubble Space Telescope to tell us where these lens galaxies are, and this is why we can look back in time. This is Mimas, which is a moon in Saturn, around Saturn. The light, the time for this picture to reach us is an hour. It takes an hour for this image to get to the Earth. These galaxies, the light for them to reach the Earth is 13 billion years. So we're looking back in time 13 billion years when we look at these galaxies with the Hubble Space Telescope. 天体因为离我们有距离，它的光线过来要时间。这是土星的一个月亮，叫 Mimas。它的光线离开它，到被我们看到一个钟头。所以它在它离我们的距离叫一光，有一光时，离我们一个钟头的距离。这个是用哈勃用深度曝光二十几天的那个影像累积起来的，相当于二十几天曝光时间。他们很远很远，光线从他那边到我们这边要花一百三十亿年。记不记得宇宙大概是一百三十七亿年？所以他们光线离开他们的时候，或者是这些我们现在看到的这些天体，是宇宙只有七亿年的时候的样子，现在才被我们。Now, Hubble Space Telescope was launched in 1990, and it took 20 years to build. But first, and it was the size of a rail, it's the size of a railway carriage, so train size. But first, it wasn't working. The Hubble Space Telescope didn't didn't work. It, when you looked at galaxies, they were very fuzzy, and the mirror was polished perfectly, but to wrong specifications. 
and the specifications, the mirror was inaccurate at a scale of a 50th the size of a human hair. The Hubble Space Telescope needs to be more accurate than a 50th the size of a human hair, and this was causing galaxies to look very fuzzy. Hubble has more than 2 million years of light. In its head, the sun is on the very high sky. It has already developed and built up a very old age of 70 years old. It has done a lot of work. But when it first came out, everyone was scared because it was not clear. 后来才知道说，不是很强。基本上就是它的那个镜子啊，打磨的非常非常的精准。可是呢，错的准，它的尺错，当时用来量的那个东西错，错错多错多少呢？大概是呃这个呃，像这个人类的这个头发，还要五十分之一这样子。换句话说，这个镜片的高高低低啊，只有头发还小的很多很多很多误差。为什么？因为它要观测的是可见光，可见光的波长很短很短很短很短，这么短的东西就好像你拿网球，你拿网球拍去打乒乓球，一个粗糙的表面，你要打乒乓球一定不准，你球打过来是哪哪一部分不能，造成它的影像一开始是是不清楚。Okay, but there was a servicing mission to the Hubble Space Telescope and the astronauts, they first rehearsed underwater. Underwater is a bit like space. And then they trained with virtual reality goggles. And then finally, they fixed the Hubble Space Telescope. They added an extra box, which corrected for the fuzziness of galaxies. And finally, made a galaxy like this into a galaxy like this, and this allowed us to see the oxygen in the galaxy. Hubble, when you see, when you see it, 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 so with the Hubble Space, these are real images of disks around other stars. The star's so bright it has to be blocked out. But this is a disk around another star that will form a planet. Here's another disk that is forming planets now.可是东西如果有转就不一样，它原来打进去的会歪掉，对吧？你要再丢那个球，如果有弹在中间，丢那个球球不准直线，它会歪。这个歪下去以后啊，使得它打上去的东西，到最后缩下去以后呢，它就会
，但是一旦转的越准，又开始转弯，就变扁扁的心力嘛。那中间会丢一些东西出来，没有关系。中间形成了一个恒心，旁边的盘子。这个刚才那个盘子是可以讲是做恒心剩下的东西，啊，在目前有一个很热门的课题就是这些剩下的盘子，在 break this 残余的这个恒心的盘。So as the block collapses, the disc forms with the star at the center, and then the gas is actually heated up very high temperatures, three thousand degrees. Kelvin from the collisions between the particles, and then at this temperature, then everything was in gas form. You had hydrogen, helium, silicate, and iron, and this is the composition of the outer layers of the sun. This, when this energy is absorbed down, it 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 is absorbed down, 不会有固态的，那嗯、呃，这些气体的比例呢，大概百分之九十是氢，剩下有些是氦，然后还有些其他其他的这些杂七杂八的东西，铁啊、锡啊。目前我们看到太阳的最外面的东西，它没有核子反应哦，太阳只有中间有核子反应。太阳最外面的这些东西，就是当年最短一名气的成分。When the nebula stopped collapsing, it began to cool. So we had a hot sun and then cooler further out. So you could get metal and rocks forming on the planets close to the sun, and then water and ice further away where it was cooler, and then carbon dioxide ice and methane ice and nitrogen ice even further out. So this explains the composition of the planets as they go as you move further away from the sun. 在这个盘状结构里面，当碰撞越来越少的时候，没有加热，没有这这刺激了，就开始冷却。那我们就会发现，离中间太阳最年轻的时候的太阳比较近的呢，温度大概有一两千度，在那边当然只有氧化物、金属等等才有可能存活。到了远一点的时候呢，我们就会看到。还有，呃，就就会变成固态，水水冰。到了土星那边的时候，再往外面，你就会看到那个凝固点更低的温度的东西。我们看到，呃，二氧化碳、甲烷，还有呃，阿莫尼亚，还有铝氮等等的冰。所以这就解释了为什么行星里面是固，呃，是岩石质的，外面是气体的冰态质。Okay, so metal and rocks form solids or condense from gas at high temperatures, but uh, water evaporates into a gas at a low temperature, so they could only condense in cool parts of the disk. And at Jupiter, the temperature was cool enough to freeze water, so it's very important. The temperature is very important. Uh, 可以在高温的时候，它就啊，它还存活；很高的温度，它才才才气化嘛哈。那水啊、阿莫尼亚跟那个甲烷的话呢，它在比较低的温度才能够成为固态，所以它要在比较冷的地方，它才能够出现冰体。那差不多在木星的那个位置呢，那个那个距离呢，这个呃水就可以就成为冰冰体。So in our solar system, you could form rocks and metals further in from what we call the frost line, and beyond the frost line, this is where you are able to have frozen materials into the the planets, which were became the gas giants. 你如果到有雪的地方下雪的时候，你就会发现，到了某一个高度以上就有雪，一个高度以下就没有。这是一个温度把它区隔开，那个叫水线嘛 ，small line。太阳系也有一个 small line， 也是一样，离太阳越来越远，越来越远。哎，到了某一个距离以外，在那个才会有冰体，在以内呢，都是这些耐高温的岩石，那种金属。So after the condensation, small clumps join bigger clumps, 
which are called accretion, to eventually form planets. They join together to form bigger and bigger clumps. 在大家讲的盘子里面的那些小碎渣小石头小冰块它会慢慢慢慢像这个冰雪它就慢慢慢慢聚在一起凝在一起对吧聚在一起少数会碰撞分开但都会聚在一起等它变得比较大了以后它就
Yes, in the other gases. Okay, so that's correct. So there were no plants initially. Okay, so in the early atmosphere on Earth, there was no oxygen. So this is 2.5 to 1.5 billion years ago. There was no oxygen, and then suddenly, so we just had carbon dioxide and water. So we had some water, one lot of carbon dioxide, and then we had methane and ammonia, and lots of nitrogen. Okay, so this is all nitrogen. This is methane and ammonia. This is carbon dioxide, and this is time. So over time, something happened to make carbon dioxide go down, the methane and ammonia go down, and the oxygen went up. How? That's right, so plants. And it was a special type of plant which were actually in the ocean bacteria. And this is called cyanobacteria. You can find them still. They're tiny. They look like little grapes. They're about a centimeter wide. And these created the first oxygen in the universe.就出現了,可是一下子就沒有了 十六亿到二十五亿年前左右，因为植物出现，植物就就就可以把二氧化碳。可是在这之前，植物不是一下出现，最早是这个呃，三氧化碳bacteria，它是一种菌，但是呢，我们讲中文就是一开始把它叫
，宇宙中心现在只有我们有很多氧气啊，氧气一旦出现，甲烷就消失，就也减少，甲烷一减少，我们就没有温室效应，或者减少温室效应，糟糕。Is it class action? If the oxygen level is too high, Hotter or cooler? You can discuss with your neighbors first. If it's like this, the Earth will become more hot. Then, it Oxygen started being produced around here in small quantities, very small amounts of oxygen. But every time oxygen was created, it was react with methane, and the methane was keeping the Earth warm. So it it actually ate up the methane. Okay, and so then that's why there was now no more methane. And, and since the the oxygen reacted with the methane, which was keeping the Earth warm, the Earth got cooler. Cooler and cooler and cooler. So, what do you think happened to the Earth? How cool did it get? Do you think from this process? You can discuss. How cool did the Earth get? It will get warmer, but it will get cooler.
What did she say? She said minus 18C. Minus 18C. Any other, any other ideas? Okay, that's a good guess. What happened was it caused the first ice age. Okay, but there were, there were actually no animals alive during the first ice age. It was just the cyanobacteria. And uh, so what, what, would have, what happened to the cyanobacteria and the oxygen during this ice age, do you think? You can discuss again. So what was the question? What happened to the oxygen and the bacteria during the first ice age? Okay, what do you think happened first to the to the uh, bacteria, the cyanobacteria during the ice age? It's just a theory, and anybody can make up the theory. Yeah. What happened to the cyanobacteria? Let's discuss for two minutes. Big, big groups. Turn around, talk to the people behind you, talk to the people near you. Uh, I think maybe uh, the bacteria was blocked in the ice. Uh, the bacteria was blocked in the ice and maybe they uh, noticed something more. Uh, stuck in the ice and hibernated. Okay, you're saying they went dormant in the ice. No. Yes. Yeah, the process of release oxygen slowed. Yes, it did. In fact, the bacteria nearly died. It almost, almost died. It actually wiped out almost all of the bacteria. And so that meant that there was very, became very little oxygen again. Okay, much, much, much less oxygen. But a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of oxygen survived on the earth. And then this oxygen, this cyanobacteria, there was a little bit of bacteria left after the ice age. And this was able to make little bits of oxygen. And then they created more bacteria. They created more oxygen, more bacteria propagated in their oceans little bit more oxygen and over time the oxygen levels rose and the oxygen levels got huge really really huge after that and they got so huge that it allowed very large animals and very large insects like dinosaurs because of the large amounts of oxygen they need lots of energy and so they needed lots of oxygen as well as lots of food there were also very large insects so there were dragonflies that were the size of several meters across. And uh, centipedes that were three or four meters long. But then there was another ice age, and that ice age we think killed off dinosaurs, many plants, 
and uh, the oxygen levels went down and now the oxygen levels are very constant and they don't fluctuate so much which is good for us. So now we have our earth that we live in. Uh, I'm from Australia. <laughs> we have Australia right in the middle here. And now we have oceans, we have our oxygen in our atmosphere, and clouds. And uh, it's, the, the way it is, the way it is, is because it was formed, the oxygen was formed in stars and then uh, ended up in the Earth's atmosphere just because of leftovers from the solar system formation and then there were many periods of fluctuations of oxygen up and down and up and down. They're all looking for Taiwan. Uh, <laughs> it's up there. No, it's, it's around, uh, up somewhere. It's towards the top. It's, it's that small one. <laughs> all right? Okay, so take a deep breath. What we've discovered, really deep breath, what we've discovered is the oxygen atoms that you're breathing are 11 to 13 billions of years old. Oh,吸口气的 this oxygen comes from stars in the very, very early universe, and then it escaped from the stars through massive explosions, massive supernova and stellar winds that blew out the oxygen from stars over and over and over and over again as galaxies formed and then evolved and had collisions throughout 13 billion years in the universe's history. 借由天体的演化，还有碰撞啊、互动等等这些，星球产生了氧气，老化、死亡以后，大规模的爆发，就回归了星球，氧还是氧，哎，继续，继续，继续。Now the oxygen catastrophe nearly wiped out all life on Earth because the oxygen reacted with the methane and that caused the first ice age and this was almost catastrophic to the plant material, the cyanobacteria. It's good to be alive. Okay, and now I want to talk about the future. So how can we learn about the oxygen in the very first stars and the very first galaxies in the universe? is a question for you. How, right now, with our current telescopes, we can't see the first stars and the first galaxies in the universe, but we'd like to know how the first oxygen formed. What can we do to look at the first oxygen in the universe? You can discuss with your neighbor. The question is very short. We just talked about the first stars. 
，它是理论出来，我们现在没有看到 first start， 要怎么样发展技术，要怎么样可以让我们的研究在一开始的那一批制造氧的那个核子反应炉啊，那些要怎么做，怎样才能看到它？They want to hear the question again. Okay. What can we do to see the first stars and the first galaxies in the universe? 怎么样才能够看到第一代的恒星跟星系？ Who has any ideas? Do you have one? Say your idea. What are the properties of the first star? They are made of helium and hydrogen. And they create an oxygen, the first oxygen, yes. Oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen from those first stars. And so there are many ways we can look for the first stars in the universe, or we could look for the hydrogen in the early universe. And astronomers are building new telescopes now to do this. And there are many different telescopes that we're building to see the first. Stars in the first galaxies in the universe, as well as the hydrogen. Remember, there was a red hydrogen fog. We want to see that too. We want to see what that looked like. So, one thing we're doing in Australia is building a telescope called the Murchison Widefield Array. We have one working now, but we're extending it. This is a radio telescope, low frequency, very similar to the Square Kilometre Array, which is a very large telescope which is going to go in Australia. In South Africa, this telescope will be able to detect hydrogen from the very early universe. 就是要大望远镜。那现在有几个大望远镜计划在做嘛？那刚才讲到的是，比如在澳洲，他们在做电波的望远镜。刚刚讲到一个 square kilometer array， 就是叫 S K A 啊。大家在几年之内。但是所有可可拉米的就是一公里呃建方啊，然后大红大绿什么这些，那因为是电波，它主要是它那个是要在这七长年的几年就起，主要是。不过呃这么大的一个阵列花这么多钱要摆在世界上最好的地方，可见光